talk to you about our newest folding machine. It is the Mark 7 High Speed Folder. This machine will come to you packaged in a skid in a crate and will have several components to it. When you first pull the machine out of the box, this is the main component that you will, you will see. You will also have in separate boxes within the box, you will have two full tables. This being full table number one. And this being full table number two. In addition to the full tables, you will also have a motorized exit conveyor. And you will also have a friction feed feed table. All these components will, of course, have to be installed on the machine. Once you've unpacked all your components and verified that they are in good uh, condition, uh, the first thing you're going to want to install will be the exit conveyor. To install the exit conveyor, you simply take the cord and it plugs into the machine over here. You push it in and tighten down your nut. You then want to slide the machine in here like this and it simply locks into place like so. The other part of the exit conveyor goes on to the uh, on as an extension. You'll also note a very simple fold chart that comes with each machine already installed on the exit tray um, extension. And it simply goes on to the heads of these bolts right here, like so, and it locks into place. The next thing you're going to want to put in is going to be your friction feed table. And that goes on the opposite side of the machine. And you simply pick it up, slide it in, and drop it into place like so. The next thing you're going to want to install is your fold table number one. Fold table number one is very easy to delineate from fold table number two. It is longer than fold table number two. Fold table number one always goes on the upper side. And it just snaps into place. And fold table number two goes underneath the feed tray and snaps into place in the same manner. Now you can see that was very easy to install. Um, it actually probably takes more time to unpack it than it actually does to put all those pieces in there. To give you a little idea of some of the features that come on the new Mark 7 high speed, um, paper range. This machine will run from 16 pound bond up to 80 pound cover. It will also run paper from three and a half inches wide by four and a quarter inches long up to 14 inches wide by 20 inches long. It comes with adjusting paper guides. The paper guides can of course be adjusted to run the ranges that I just gave you as far as paper widths and then this table is able to accommodate up to 20 inch long paper. Additional features that this machine comes with, it comes with a variable speed for the fold speed itself it also comes with a variable speed for the exit conveyor. Now, the exit conveyor, since it is ran off of a separate motor, the speed needs to be adjusted proportionally to the speed that you're running the folding machine at. If you run the machine at an excessive rate of speed and don't proportionally adjust the exit conveyor speed, you will have stack up problems in the exit conveyor. It will feed back up into the machine and jam up. So keep that in mind when you're running your machine. We also have a D-jam handle installed on the side of the machine. The D-jam handle is actually freewheeling so that while the machine is running, it doesn't of course spin to cause any danger to anybody who may be wearing a tie or have long hair or something to that effect. But to use the D-jam handle, you simply pull out on it and turn. And when you're doing that, it engages the rollers and it D-jams whatever may be in the roller package. You might notice these little tongues on the side of the machine here. These are actually the types of features that you see on high-end um, floor model machines that you see in uh, printers. And what these are for is to actually adjust the gaps between the rollers. And the reason that these are like this is that they're spring-loaded. As you can see here, I'm lifting it. 
You can see here that it lifts as well. And what you do is, depending on what paper weight you're running, you take a piece of the sample stock, and let's say you're doing a letter or a Z fold, for example. The first roller, when the paper enters the nip, is the thickness of one piece of paper. You tear a strip off to that size, you simply lift that up, slide it in there, and now that roller is gapped to that thickness of paper. Of course, when you've ran it through the first fold plate and you're entering your second fold roller, now that it's folded once, you have two thicknesses of paper. So, you fold a piece of paper over that you've torn, you pull that out, slide it in, and the roller is gapped for two thicknesses of paper. And then, of course, coming out, you've now folded the paper twice on a letter or a Z fold, and now you need three thicknesses of paper following the same logic. You pull this up, slide it in, and now your roller's gapped for the two folds of paper. And there's actually corresponding ones on each side of the machine, so you need to do that to both sides of the machine when you're setting it up and getting ready to run um, your job. Uh, these, uh, this machine's also equipped with a uh, simple fold chart. This here is a simple fold chart that comes with the machine. It covers paper range 6x9, 85 by 11 all the way up to 14x20. And you also have your ISO paper sizes here for Europe in you know, A5 up to A3+. Plus. And then over here you have a corresponding legend that shows letter Z, double parallel, and so on. And it tells you specifically where to set each one of the fold plates based on what you're folding. Fold plate number one, on this particular fold and this particular size you'd want to set it at 6.02 inches. And then to the right of each one of the fold plate settings you'll see a little arrow and that little arrow tells you exactly where to set your stack wheels. The stack wheels that come with this machine are actually dual adjustable stack wheels. You have an adjustment here to slide like this and you have an adjustment here to slide like this and it also flips like this. So you can cover the large range of paper sizes that you're actually going to be folding. And underneath the paper spring here you will see the corresponding legends and numbers that I showed you on this simple fold chart. So let's say we're going to do a, a Z fold uh, on 8.5 by 11 paper. Um, you simply loosen up the nuts to slide the, the paper guides and you'll see the legend on the um, side here and for a Z fold on 8.5 by 11 you need to set fold table number one at about 3.67 inches um, you know to, to convert it to fractions uh, 675 is 5 eighths so you want to set it right at about you know 3 and 5 eighths inches and you can see on the legend here I've, I've got it right at about 3 and 5 eighths inches you tighten it down and you make sure you're set equally on the other side to get a square fold as possible now, uh, a lot of times you'll be dealing with stock that's not perfectly square cut, and when you're doing that, um, you have to be able to adjust your uh, fold stops independently for non-square paper, and that's what these, these two knobs right here do. It gives you micro adjustment on the paper stop from side to side. Now that we've set the first fold table, I'm going to pull the second fold table out because it's a little easier to set it that way. And this was set up for a letter fold before and the second fold on a Z and letter fold are exactly the same and you can see this one's already set at 3.67 inches. You reinstall your second fold tape plate. And now your machine is set up and, and ready to run your 8.5 by 11 in a Z fold configuration. I talked a little bit about the paper range that this machine can run. Let's talk a little bit about the throughput. This machine can actually run at a rate of 36,000 sheets per hour, and that rating is determined based on an industry standard of how many half folds it can do an hour. So when you say 36,000 sheets per hour, that's saying you could do 36,000 pieces of 8.5 by 11 in a half hour that's half folded. If you, of course, want to do a letter fold, it takes a little bit longer. Um, and it also, the speed is actually really determined by the operator that it has to continually be loaded um, to achieve, you know, whatever throughput. So, um, in this particular case, these paper guides are set up to hold an entire ream of 8.5 by 11 uh, paper, which is 500 sheets. And you notice 500 sheets sits on there and, and you're at the full height of the paper guide. Uh, you of course don't have to run 500 sheets, you may only want to run 375 or 200, you know, whatever the case may be. 
Um, but once you've got all that set, um, your machine's now ready to be ran. Okay, once you've set up all the components that go on the machine and you've gotten it ready to fold, you want to also get it ready um, for the paper that you're going to be running, and that's uh, also a determinant as to where your sheet separator needs to be set. Um, you can see here that I'm clearly sliding the paper in and out of the sheet separator. Um, this knob right here adjusts it, and you want to pull it in and out until you start to get some grabbing by that sheet separator and then you know you're going to have a pretty good feed on it is you know you want to get just a slight grab and again this is this is variable i mean climate conditions um, humidity in the air things like that are going to vary how paper feeds in a paper folder so you know you can't expect to just drop your stack on here and start running it and walk away because environmental conditions can change feeding conditions of a uh, folding machine so you, you know just like any other folder, you may have to tweak with um, the sheet separator. To turn your machine on, you simply power the switch on. You can see here that you have a red LED counter um, that counts the number of sheets that you folded. Um, as I alluded to earlier, this is your fold speed. Um, this goes from 1 to 8, which of course 1 being the lowest, 8 being the fastest. But you can turn the machine on and it starts to go very slowly and you won't be able to hear me in a moment as I turn it on. And then the exit conveyor is controlled speed wise here. So um, with that being said, I will now load some, some paper into the machine and we will fold some for you. Uh, one of the things that you can do is you can put the paper in here to stop or you can drop it in on a run and um, it will continue to feed. I'm going to go ahead and power it up and turn on the speed. The Mark 7 also comes with a score per uh, cartridge that uh, can be used should the job require such a, a need. Um, the cartridge simply plugs in and plugs out. You uh, simply you press these buttons and you remove the cartridge. And then what you do to do your scoring or perfing job, you remove this um, hex cap right here, pull this off, you pull these off, and then you the score and perf wheel that come with it and the backup hubs would get mounted on here and then you would reinstall it back into the machine to do the uh, score and perf job. Now to do a score and perf job you of course can't um, you can't uh, fold at the same time because if you have a score and perf wheel on the shafts here it's going to score and perf whatever it is that you're folding. Uh, both fold tables come with a reversible profile to put them in backwards. You'll notice along this geometry right here, you'll see a radius. This radius is to match up against the rollers. If you want to do a score perf job, you simply put your fold table in backwards, like so. And you do the same thing to the second fold table. Now, since your fold table is in backwards, and the end that is put in is actually sealed off. It's called a diverter, and it diverts the paper straight through, instead of entering the full table, straight through the roller package and down through the score perf wheels that you installed, and then it will come out on the exit conveyor, conveyor either scored or perf, depending on what type of job you're